How do you deal with a bad run in poker? When you are suddenly getting beaten by any two cards, you may begin to question and second guess everything. While contemplating thoughts such as, why am I so unlucky or cursed or why does God hate me? How did I ever think that I was any good at this game? This kind of thinking is pointless, yet you'll find yourself falling into this trap during a stretch of bad cards and sessions. Don't go there. Come back. You do not deserve that. It takes time and patience, but you can reach a point where you gain a thicker skin. Learn to let it be, continue playing your game, and know that it'll all work out in the long run. This is one long game, so step back and look at your overall records to gain perspective. You are keeping records, I hope. If not, start now, regardless of how often you play. Also, better questions to ask are, what can I do to improve my situation and or my game right now? Am I playing each and every hand to the best of my ability? Am I in the right state of mind to stay at the table, or am I changing my game in desperate hope of changing the bad luck? Which most often makes things worse, by the way. Is there a better table or a venue that I could be playing in right now? It's not a matter of if a bad patch will happen, but when it will happen. You will get frustrated and impatient. Dig deep and let that go to the best of your ability, otherwise your discipline is going to suffer. Bankrolls are designed to get you through these rough stretches. So step away from the table now and then, take a walk, go out by the pool, do something to change your scenery. If you're playing for a living or intend to play for a living, taking time off for more than a day or two is not really a viable option. Mental breaks from the game are important, however, and feeling sorry for yourself lends nothing positive. Keeping a sense of order when all around you is chaos is crucial to your overall game. Give extra attention to your daily routine and find pleasure in the simple things. Do what you can do to keep a sense of order in your daily life. Eat right, sleep, exercise, read. Focus on those things that you can influence. Something as simple as making your bed in the morning. Sometimes this may feel like the only good thing you've seen at the end of the day. Pick up other hobbies that feed your soul in some way and focus on these during your time away from the tables. Keep yourself from staring at walls for endless hours. Focus on something that you enjoy or something you think you'll enjoy. Pick up something that you're passionate about. Learn something new. Whatever it takes, do something different. Give it a shot. Dive in. That's gold. Next thing you know, you'll come soaring out of the hole, gain profits, and the pain from the past losses will begin to fade. So one of the questions I think I get asked more than any other is, how do you deal with the long, outstretched, ongoing beatings? How do you deal with the real frustration of it? I mean, it becomes a physical frustration. Besides psychology and just doing things outside of yourself and, and you know, things we've discussed before, I'm not going to lie and say that it's easy. Earlier on, I dealt with it poorly myself. I, I, I did not handle it well. Driving home sometimes, I mean, this steering wheel would get some attention. This dash might get a little bit of attention. This console right here in the middle had to be replaced at one point. And I may or may not have had to replace it because of frustration from the poker game. But this reminds me of a good friend of mine. He had been running horribly for a couple of weeks, and this particular night, I was at the table with him, and he was doing well. I was thinking he was he was coming out of this. He had climbed up to seven, eight hundred, and uh, that wasn't too bad. I mean, for him, it was going to be a profit. He was happy about this. He he looked like he was starting to feel pretty good about it. He's he's about to pack it in. He ordered a beer. He, he's gonna leave. He's about to leave, and. 
you know, then suddenly he gets dealt a hand and he raises and there's a re-raise and he re-raises and gets called and it turns out to be an aces versus kings situation. And my buddy has his aces, the other guy has kings, and an ace and a king come on the flop. So this is a train wreck, and it's going to happen. And, of course, they do end up getting it all in on the turn. And the guy says, I have a set, and realizes that he has one out, one king left in the deck to save him. And it comes. It comes on the river. It's, uh, it's not funny, but... We've all been there at some point, one outer, and he loses a huge pot, and the beer arrives at that point, and he just kind of looks at me with a combination of intense frustration and sadness and a ton of other emotions all wrapped up in there. Shrugs his shoulders, takes a sip off of his beer, wishes everyone well, and heads to the outskirts of the room. I glance over at him as he reaches the edge of the room and I see him lift his bottle and just slam it down into the garbage can and beer and glass shoot everywhere. It just shatters everywhere and I'm watching this and I still jump in my chair. Uh, he whips around and the floor people, you know, look like they're about to call security <laughs> and he just says, I'm sorry and just sits there for a second, turns around and walks out. Nobody does anything about it. I think that on some level, if you played it all for any considerable amount of time, you know that feeling right there. And at some point, you you know, you try to hide it. You try to hold it back, but sometimes it just goes. It just it just goes. So uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I've been there a few times myself. I I can't. I haven't slammed a bottle down in public or anything, but. I've come pretty close. You will get through, it'll turn around, and things will be okay. Doesn't doesn't necessarily soothe you any, but you just take a deep breath and just don't break anything. You know, there are other ways to let out your frustration other than breaking things, because that's that's not the way to go. And for a healthier alternative, this is Bob. Bob is not only good for training, but he's very, very good for taking out frustration. A hanging punching bag, anything along that line, an Everlast bag, but Bob, Bob has saved me on many occasions because you can really just take it out on him until, until your knuckles bleed or whatever you feel necessary until you just feel at peace again. So when you do feel like you have to unleash on something, Bob is perfect. Well, we'll let him rest while we go dig into some hand histories, shall we? After returning from Mexico, this was literally the first hand back at the tables. A hand where it all began. I haven't as of yet figured out how I'll be filming the hand, so it's this graphic for now, but uh, I'll get this worked out soon. When I arrived, a brand new 1-2 No Limit game was starting, and the majority of the players were buying in for the $300 max. We get started, there's an early position limper, and we have black fives. Now generally, I prefer to raise when I'm first or second into the pot. However, this time I choose to limp along and see what develops. The button raises to 13. Both blinds and limper fold. I make the call, and we're heads up to the $31 pot. The flop comes deuce, queen, three, rainbow. I check, the button bets 20. I don't recall playing at the same table as this guy, but I've seen him around, and I assume he's a local, but I don't know anything about the way he plays. There are cards that could improve our hand on the turn, five being the most fun, and as possible, we still have the best hand, so I make the call. And the turn brings the gin card, five of diamonds. I check, just praying that he has the hand strong enough to continue. He bets 65, I check raise to 170, and then he goes all in for 97 more. I didn't like the way that he seemed so eager to get his chips in the middle, however. It seemed pretty quick with almost no hesitation, but it's not wise to shoot for middle set, hit it, and fold for the last 97. We have the fourth nuts in two-way pot. We lose to ace four, four six queens 
Well, we beat a set of deuces or threes, pocket aces, kings, ace, queen of diamonds, ace, king of diamonds, and maybe jacks if he happens to be going crazy with that. But this no longer seems like a feel-good turn. We call the rivers the jack of spades. He shows us red queens for top set. See? Wasn't hitting that five the most fun? Next hand. Our chips for the second buy-in haven't even made it to the table yet. While we're looking down at aces. This is perfect timing. People may assume that I'm steaming a little from the last hand and just attempting to dive right back in to get my money back. I fully expect to get played back at in this spot. I raise to 10. And one by one, each and every player folds. And the dealer struggles while attempting to push us the way to the $3 in blinds. Next hand. We've been card dead for a little while before this next hand happens. We have gotten in there many times with connectors and Broadway cards and things along that line, but overall just missing boards and folding. We have managed to build our stack up to about six and change. However, we're into the game for, we had the rebuy and we've capped off twice for 100 and we're into the game for about 800. When the following hand goes down, there's a very loose aggressive player who is just showing naked aggression for the last 45 minutes he's been at the table, last hour or so that he's been at the table. And he's into the game for about a thousand. The action folds to him and he open raises for 20. And I look down at the perfect scenario, aces. I decide I'm going to raise a little bigger than usual in this spot because he has not folded one time preflop after raising that I've seen. I make it 85 and he snap calls. And we go heads up to the flop of eight, jack four with two diamonds. He checks and I bet 110. He calls fairly quickly. On the turn of a black deuce, he bets into us for a hundred. Now, I suppose he could have a set of jacks. I don't, I don't see him taking this line. I think he raises me right on the flop. The way that he's playing on top of the feel that I get from him in the hand is that I am, I am more than ahead here. I'm, I'm confident I have the best hand. I'm not worried about anything other than combo draws at this point. I mean, raise him to 200, leaving him not too much behind. If he calls, he sticks the rest in. After thinking about it for a while, he says he's all in. I call and he looks at me and says, you probably have an overpair. You think? I'm not real happy about the black queen that comes on the river because, I mean, it, at least the diamond draw didn't complete, but if he has queens, he just got there. I look at him and he doesn't look like he's interested in showing the hand. So I choose to put him out of his misery and just table our hand. He looks at it for a second and then one by one turns over a jack and a queen. Offsuit for two pair on the river. For a river to pair. I'm thinking to myself, at least it's go at least my chips are going to a good home because he's mixing it up and then I look over and before the dealer even finishes pushing him the pot, he's already got a couple racks on the table and he's putting the chips in the rack and he's out of there before, literally before the chips are even completely in front of him, he's out of there. So that's that. 